Hey everyone, Couch Investor here with another video for you today. Today is another video about a famous portfolio. We're going to talk about Mr. Bill uh, Gates, um, obviously founder and ex-CEO of uh, Microsoft. Um, before I get started, if you haven't subscribed, please help me reach a 300 subscriber by clicking on that red button and if you like the videos give it a thumbs up it really helps me out with the youtube algorithm and getting my videos out there to you guys so without further ado let's dive into this portfolio all right so let's uh, dive right into this so bill gates portfolio we'll know bill gates founder and ex-ceo of uh, microsoft now it's his portfolio looks a bit like this uh, as you can see, large stake in Berkshire Hathaway and then lots of other stakes in other companies. You will see um, those companies are have one thing in common. They are all good dividend paying, paying companies. Um, so let's start with uh, Berkshire Hathaway. So Berkshire at the time of making this video, prices might vary with all the stocks. So at the time of making this video, it's at $174. It's obviously managed by Warren Buffett. And well, the reason why it's such a big chunk of his portfolio is over 50% is because, well, one point is Gates and Buffett are great friends. So obviously he trusts him, uh, well, to manage a big part of his, uh, of his riches, let's say. Um, I did a video before on, on uh, Berkshire Hathaway and what, what, what their holdings. Um, actually, it was uh, Charlie Munger's portfolio. So basically, they own lots of companies such as Geico, Duracell, NetJet, etc. But they also have major stakes in other companies such as IBM, Wells Fargo, Coca-Cola, Kraft Heinz, Goldman Sachs, and, and many more. So you diversify your portfolio and then even within Berkshire, it is well diversified as well. As you can see here, this is the chart for Berkshire Hathaway. The stock started, I think, in 1990 something, went all the way back up. You can see it's obviously it has its crashes over time, financial crisis, uh, dot com bubble slash 9-11. Now the Corona uh, situation. So overall, steady growth, very very nice, very good for a big portfolio like uh, Bill Gates' one. Second uh, biggest position is Caterpillar. Now we all know Caterpillar. They look well. Their business looks a bit like like this. Um, this is a global business model. Well, most of their their business is from the outside of uh, the US. So they do everything from supply based product design components, logistics, you can read all of it right here, distribution, financial services, etc. The price, well, it was, I think at 160, 165 as its all time highs in the last five years, um, went under $100. Now, it's at 107, maybe a bit more, depending on when you're watching this, this video. Again, what we can see here is a nice dividend yield of 3.82%, something Bill Gates likes a lot in his portfolio. His third, his, uh, sorry, his second was actually waste management. Caterpillar was his third. So waste management is a provider of waste management, environmental services, uh, it services uh, transfer stations to collect waste, landfills to deposit the waste, provide services to over 21 million customers. As you can see, the company has been growing immensely in the last five years because, well, the world wants to go in a more, in a grow in a more eco-friendly way and well, Bill Gates is also one of the leaders in this whole uh, revolution, um, which is with his foundations, the Bill and Miranda uh, Foundation. So obviously one of his biggest holdings will be something that uh, is very good for the environment. Now, something I didn't know before, maybe lots of you didn't know as well, it's a Canadian National Railway. 
Canada's it's Canada's largest railway out there. It has 20.4 route miles going from Nova Scotia to British Columbia. Um, they have a huge competitive advantage because, well, obviously it's, it's the biggest railway out there and basically a monopoly because if you want to compete, you will have to build uh, this whole infrastructure uh, from, from scratch and that will probably take you years and lots of uh, amount of cash. Now, the stock itself, pretty steady in the last couple of years uh, it grew and then it was up down up down up down but as you can see it always finds support at around what is this 65 70 dollars so if you can pick it up at those prices pretty good again dividend yield two percent very nice why not next we have walmart Walmart is the largest brick and mortar uh, retailer in the world. Um, it's very consumer defensive, these type of stocks, um, because, well, people will always need to eat, like we saw during this pandemic. Um, people will rush to the supermarket and buy everything they can because, well, they're panicking. And that's when Walmart comes in. Um, it's things we all we will always need doesn't matter if it's a financial crisis a health crisis we will always need to go and buy uh, things at the supermarket now, another good thing is walmart has been transitioning very well into e-commerce it has been transforming its website to be more online friendly uh, more like a bit like amazon um, and that's why in the last five years you can see the stock has doubled in price from 2016 to 2020 um, again also it's okay dividend payments our next one is again a very eco-friendly stock ecolab is a global provider of water hygiene and energy uh, basically clean water safe food abundant energy and healthy environment are their main focus um, doesn't surprise me at all that the stock has been on the rise since well 2016 also almost doubled in price a bit lower dividend but still a dividend paying stock um, as you can see you can find a trend here with dividend paying stocks and stocks that are actually good for the uh, environment now crown castle is a real estate investment uh, trust it's the largest provider of shares uh, of shared communications infrastructure in the United States with more than 40,000 cell towers and approximately 70,000 root miles uh, of fiber supporting small cells and fiber solutions. Um, so here we are seeing something different in his portfolio, but again, a stock with a very good, very nice uh, dividend yield and again, nice growth over the last five years. Now for the last three stocks, uh, this shouldn't should be a, a no-brainer. FedEx and UPS we will gather them together. Um, again, both of them in the delivery service. As the world moves on, we will need more uh, types of delivery services, and I think those two companies are well positioned to take that on them. Um, FedEx, its stock, well, it was hit. Uh, quite badly recently um, I think also because of their uh, because Amazon um, wants to go their own way their own delivery service um, but again nice little dividend right here and I don't see FedEx going anywhere anytime soon um, especially in a world where people will maybe leave their houses less um, in the future, not only because of the coronavirus, but just in general, technology will evolve. We will evolve as well. And why go to the store if you can get things delivered at your house? Now, UPS have, has an even better dividend deal of 4.35%. Uh, the stock itself has been, for the last five years, almost the same, going from 120 to the 90s ups and downs ups and downs but this is a dividend yield paying stock um, so again same thing i don't see ups going anywhere anytime soon and lastly 
Coca Cola, FEMSA, no, not Coca Cola, the company. This is the company that bottles the beverages. Um, obviously, Coca Cola has a large uh, family, Sprite, Fanta, uh, Monster Beverages, etc. So, Coca Cola, FEMSA has around two, uh, 350 million customers worldwide. And as you can see, dividend yield of 8%. Um, obviously, the stock has been slashed in two uh, because of this crisis but overall goes at around 60 to almost 80 dollars all the time so you might pick it up at a good discount right here um, but again this is how his portfolio looks you see the largest chunk 53 percent berkshire hathaway 10 percent waste management almost eight percent caterpillar 7.38 percent uh, canadian railway then 6.57% Walmart, uh, Ecolab at 4%, the Real Estate Investment Trust at 3.61%, FedEx and UPS together at 470 and Coca-Cola, uh, FEMSA at 1.79%, so it doesn't really affect him uh, that much, these little stocks. Obviously, his portfolio is way bigger than that, but those positions are, are less than 1% or close to 1%, so that uh, doesn't really interest me. Um, for me, the most interesting part are waste management, Caterpillar, Walmart. Canadian Railway is not a road, railroad is not for me, um, but waste management, Caterpillar, and Ecolab for me is a very interest, three interesting picks for the long term as we move in a more sustainable society, um, etc. So if you would like me to cover one of those three stocks or all three of them, let me know down in the comments below. I will for sure uh, take a look at it when I have the, the time because I have already planned the schedule for this month. It's very in interesting and exciting content coming to you guys. More famous portfolios coming out, so stay tuned. That will be all for this video. If you're interested in more videos, hit that subscribe button, it's free. And if you're liking the videos, please leave it a thumbs up. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. And if you're interested in more famous portfolios, I think they can pop up right here. Um, we talked about uh, Jeff Bezos already and Charlie Munger. And there are going to be many, many more to come. So if you're interested, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you all in the next video. Bye-bye.